Okay, I'd like to invite uh, Timothy Ratzlaff up uh, for his talk, Developing an Educational Module for Ergonomics and Ophthalmology. Great, thanks very much, uh, Will and uh, Dr. Bellin, for the invitation. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, so this is uh, just a continuation of um, some of the things that uh, Dr. Brissett was chatting about. Um, we had taken her uh, literature review and used that to build an educational module. I'll just go into a bit more detail what it entails. Um, so this is a kind of a joint effort between members of Queen's as well as uh, uh, members of uh, University of Ottawa. Um, I've also done three years of kinesiology at UVic, and so I'm pseudo-qualified about some of this stuff. Um, I have no disclosures. Um, so these learning objectives for the talk are, are the same as what is uh, identified in the module. So the module itself hopes to review the importance of ergonomics and ophthalmology, which we've heard a lot about this morning. Um, identify areas in the clinic or the operating room that may predispose to musculoskeletal disorders uh, to learn proper ergonomic risk factor uh, modification and recognize signs and symptoms of musculoskeletal disorder and understand the importance of early intervention. Um, so I won't belabor the point, but you know, we, we know that this is a growing problem in Canada um, and currently underrepresented in, in Canadian uh, education, hence the making of this module. Um, so as Ashley mentioned, she had uh, completed her master's thesis, and we took those three uh, kind of core findings of her systematic review and applied those into the module to try to target them specifically uh, in the educational component. Um, so the original module was developed in 2016, and uh, myself and Dr. Brissett have uh, worked to kind of revamp it uh, after getting feedback and additional um, uh, advice from ergonomics and biomechanics specialists from Queen's University. So this is uh, just a snapshot of the title page. So it's titled Musculoskeletal Disorders and Ophthalmologists, a module for best ergonomic practices and injury prevention. Um, so we go over uh, a few kind of core um, uh, components. Uh, the most um, one of the most important ones being your positioning uh, in any situation that you're in. Um, you can always do something more ergonomically sound. <clears throat> so we talk about neutral posture. That's kind of a big buzzword in ergonomics. And neutral posture is one that evenly distributes compressive loads across the spine with minimal muscular effort. And it's one that aligns your joints properly or as properly as possible. Um, we discuss and delineate the consequences of chronic non-neutral positioning. So physical changes such as exaggerated uh, cervical lordosis, uh, anterior head translation, rolled for, uh, forward shoulders, et cetera. Um, we encourage the uh, uh, learner to consider ergonomics in every position that you're in. Um, we have a, a, a whole series of photos that describe kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So poorer and better ergonomics uh, positions are demonstrated. This is in uh, fairly all-encompassing environment uh, uh, context, rather, like desk work, uh, slit lamp, using direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy, um, any technique that requires two hands, like loose lenses, prisms, uh, refraction, OR, laser procedures, et cetera. So we try to be as all-encompassing as possible. Um, and we use the biopsychosocial model to modify personal, behavioral, and environmental factors, which can all contribute. And uh, highlight the point that patient positioning is often one of the keys to maintaining your own good, neutral posture. So I'll just go over a few of the photos that we used, and um, there's obviously a lot more detail in the module. I'll just kind of give you a few snapshots of some of the more relevant ones to, uh, to us in ophthalmology, and the ones that pretty much all of us do in our day to day. So desk work, as was just alluded to by Dr. Bellin, um, we do a really bad job at being ergonomic with our desk work. The photo on the left is maybe a mild exaggeration of my positioning half the time before I was aware of this. So you can see I'm not facing the computer. My monitor height is too low. Um, my arms are unsupported. They're hanging loosely or hanging freely off the end of the desk. My chair height is high such that my knees can't get underneath the desk and my mouse is not in a close proximity. I'm having to reach to grab my mouse. And if you look on the right-hand photo, a lot of those things have been changed such that I'm facing straight ahead, the uh, monitors of um, uh, uh, more of at an eye level, things are in better reach, back straight, et cetera. So this gets the X mark of death and the check mark of green means go. Um, these, these positions are, <laughs> again, maybe a mild exaggeration, but not always. 
On the left, I call this one the uh, Dr. Michelle Beliveau. Um, <laughs> so there's kind of two things that happen when, you're, when your chair is too low, or the lamp is too low, rather. So either you're, you're hyperextending your back on the left, or you're hyperflexing and kind of hunched over like a cat. Um, you can get a lot of uh, increased shear loading through your vertebrae. Um, your shoulders are abducted and up, up towards your ears. And as you can imagine, years of this can lead to uh, chronic issues. Conversely, on the right is when the slit lamp is too high. This is the uh, Dr. Todd Erton. Um, so it's when things are a little bit too high, you're straining, you're reaching your neck up high, trying to get your, get your eyes into the oculars. Again, el elbows are up and uh, shoulders are abducted. So no, no, no. Um, so this is uh, better positioning. So um, the, one of the keys that I've found watching people and kind of looking into this is patient chair height, I think, has a, is a key thing to um, adjust. It's simple to do. A lot of the time, we just keep it at the same height. We don't move it up or down. We just keep it where it is. If you just push the chair up and have the patient lean forward, it allows you to kind of adjust it to your own bodily, um, your own body shape, your own stature and height. Um, to have a more neutral position, and this is delineated here. Um, so you've got your elbow supported on a soft case. You're resting your hands on the, um, on the uh, headband. Um, neutral wrist position when you're holding a lens. You know, back straight, feet, feet planted, um, flat on the ground. Um, not shown here, but the uh, uh, foot pedals in easy reach, etc. cetera. Um, so here's indirect ophthalmoscopy. So, Again, same thing, just um, the patient's not in an adequate position. They're too low or too high, and you're straining to uh, see the uh, uh, portions of the fundus that you need to visualize. It's better to raise the patient up, have them lean towards you. You maintain a more neutral position. You'll see that this is uh, now a cordless uh, uh, light source, which can provide less tension if it's being snagged or caught on things. Have the patient recline not fully but partially, and they can turn their head, adjust their position as you go. Um, so, uh, as Ashley alluded, you know, pain is the uh, is the f primary symptom of musculoskeletal disorder. Other things to pay attention to are decreased range of motion, paresthesias, weakness, spasm, etc. Uh, the module chats about recognizing and addressing exacerbations early to prevent the chronic postural changes. Optimize rehab with some of the things that uh, Vlad was chatting about. Um, Prevention, we've kind of chatted about these things as well. So manage your workflow with, and the repetition of your clinic. See different types of patients uh, interspersed if possible, not the same thing every time, all day. Um, make time for regular exercise and resistance training. And uh, exercises um, should be doing opposite of what you're doing in the clinic. So these are a few things bored from Dr. Uh, Bag. So these are uh, a five-point stretch, maintaining contact against the wall, moving your arms up above your head. Uh, the bottom is a shoulder rotation um, uh, exercise with broomstick cycles, wide grip, keeping your elbows straight, moving it 360, 360 degrees around your body. Um, the scapular retraction bands on the left to uh, increase your scapula strength and uh, rhomboids along the back, and myofascial release on foam rollers on the right. Um, so Ashley mentioned our goals for this. I won't, I won't belabor that point, and uh, thanks very much. <laughs>